Thanks, Rob. Well, it was Alfred Lord Tennyson who said, you know this quote, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. So what keeps us from seizing this readily available power tool? Jim George is a best-selling author, seminary professor, and former pastor. You'll still catch him at that these days. He's here to help us learn to pray with the men and women of the Bible. It is a pleasure to have you here, Jim. Thank you for what is our offer this month. Well, you're welcome. And if this isn't a hook, knowing God through prayer. <laughs> uh, share your passion. <clears throat> well, um, as I began to read through the Bible, uh, when I, uh, I'd been away from the Lord and came back, and at that point I realized that the reason that, that I was actually away from the Lord is that I wasn't in His Word. I wasn't close to Him, understanding what it is that He wanted to do with my life. And so um, I began to read through my Bible every year. And I've been pretty faithful about that for the last 40 years. And over that period of time, you kind of get a little bit of an idea of what's happening with the men and women of the Bible. And I began to see a pattern in the lives of those men and women who had a real effect on their communities and, and the world around them. And it, it came down to prayer. Oh. And what I understood about that is that they prayed in the midst of the issues or the problems or the situation. It wasn't prayer being divorced from their lives. It was prayer as a part of their lives. And so uh, over the years, I've been taking notes and putting that together. And this is the result of, of my time in the Word as I looked at these men and women of the Bible. You know, the many admonitions in the Bible to tell us to get to this. Uh, here's just a few of them. Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer. Uh, Philippians 4.6, pray about everything. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray continually. And of course, we're counseled to come boldly before the throne of grace. But the reality is, and you pointed out early in the book, Jim, uh, most of us wait until we have a crisis to pray. You call it foxhole praying. Yes. We're missing out. <laughs> on a treasure here. Well, and I think that's, that's probably the, the key to a Christ, the really a positive Christian life. In fact, is I think Spurgeon once said that you can determine the spiritual maturity of a person by the amount of time they put in prayer or they, they devote to prayer. So I think we would all say that our lives are woefully lacking when it comes to prayer. And you, it shouldn't, shouldn't be this way. We should want to pray. We should want to come to God on a daily basis or hourly or moment, on every, every moment. But for some reason, for lots of reasons, we neglect prayer in our lives. And it, it's, a, you know, it's a tragedy because God, as you, you pointed out, God expects us to be praying. And yet here we are not praying. How are you going to get us to first base? We're stuck. <laughs> I'm just speaking on a, a collective we're stuck. Uh, well, I guess recognize the fact that, that prayer is important. I think we would all say, yes, oh, I know prayer is important. But the fact is, we don't pray. And until we realize the power of prayer, realize the effectiveness of prayer, uh, and realize that that is our responsibility, obligation, and um, uh, our privilege, privilege. That was, I was just Didn't going to say we that. just get that at the same time? Yes, we did. And uh, that, uh, that should hopefully motivate, motivate us to pray. And I think really the best thing to do is just, just start talking to God. And you know, that's exactly what prayer is. It's just simply talking to God. It's just like you and I talking here. You know, it's, it's an easy thing to do. Uh, you know, we talk to each other. And I think probably... And we've only known each other for half an hour. Yeah, right. And so <laughs> prayer is communication. It's just us talking to God and then, you know, through His Word and through the counsel of other, God begins to answer those prayers. Uh, but we'll never know the answers until we ask, as Jesus mm -hmm. said. This is going to be a practical guide and you are with us all month. Uh, you're going to walk us through. We're going to get an education here and maybe bring down some of those defensive walls, the walls of ignorance. I think we think we're the wrong stuff to approach Almighty God. 
Right. I think that's part of the problem. <laughs> I think so. But as we get to know him and take those baby steps, um, we are going to see what prayer does. In the book, there's a lesson to learn, a prayer principle, and a sample prayer with each chapter, which helps. Really quickly, I'd like to know if there's one Bible character whose example really impacted your prayer life, Jim. Because mm. we're going to be tracking with men and women of the Bible. Right. <clears throat> well, I think I like Nehemiah uh, most of all because I think I can identify him and I think a lot of people can as well because, see, he wasn't a pastor, he wasn't a preacher, he wasn't a priest, he wasn't a king, he wasn't any of these things that you see about, you know, like Solomon or David praying uh, or one of the priests like Samuel or, or whatever. He was just a, an ordinary guy who when an issue came up, uh, the wall needed to be rebuilt, and he began to pray. And uh, his prayers throughout the book of Nehemiah were so uh, much, again, a part of his daily life. Whatever the issue was, he began to pray about it. He began to pray of what he could do with the wall, and he became the answer to his own prayer. And so he, to me, he becomes uh, a really... Someone key, you can identify. Yeah, I can identify with. Well, I identify, I love this verse. Uh, this is David, Psalm 27, verse 8. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Isn't that inviting? Isn't that simple? Talking to God. If you're not already, by the end of this month, I think we're going to have you in a two-way conversation. You're going to be encouraged to pray more regularly. As a result, you will know God better. You'll be moved to intercede for others and challenged to become a person of powerful prayer. I'll bet you'd like to get your hands on the book ASAP so that you can take this journey with us. Here's more.